Today on the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast, I'm going to be talking about a cup of joe. In particular, we'll be talking about caffeine. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. My name is Nicole Simonin and I am so happy that you are here. And today we are talking about one of my other favorite topics, coffee. (laughs) Uh, As I sit here and drink my Kona coffee from Joffrey's uh, from Disney. Uh, I did not go to Disney, but unfortunately, but my husband found that Joffrey sells Disney coffee online. So that was my birthday present. If you missed the episode last week, I had a birthday and I turned 47. And it's kind of funny because I keep thinking I'm 50, (laughs) even though I know I'm not. Uh, My brain keeps going, you're 50, you're 50, which kind of weird because like at 47, I should, well, not should, but I would think I would be like, yeah, I'm only one year older than 46 or two years older than 45. (laughs) But that's how crazy our brains are. So I wanted to kind of, before we dive into the topic, I wanted to kind of update you on um, some things that are going on at Shape It Up. I've got a lot of things behind the scenes that I am working on and I am like dying to tell you about. But unfortunately, I cannot just yet. So I will have to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> and I just want to know, uh, want you to know that it should be, I should be able to tell you, hopefully next week. And I'm very excited about it. So I hope that you will come back next week and take a listen to the podcast and Hopefully, I'll be able to tell you what the heck's been going on, but lots of great things going on at Shape It Up. Uh, Online training is going phenomenally. Uh, I have one client in particular who just started uh, about a month, and she's already down 10 pounds, and it's just, it's amazing to see clients go through the process that I give, and it's just so, it can be so easy, and I want that to be known because the fitness industry and the diet industry, you know, the, the powders and the potions, they want you to believe that it's hard to lose weight. And I'm telling you, it can be very, very simple to do. So I want to invite you to schedule a consult with me if you want to find out how easy it can be to lose weight. The service that I offer is a year long and basically it's a blueprint designed for you and your body on how to lose weight and not just lose it, but know how to keep it off for the rest of your life. So if that's not something like you want to know about, jump on a call with me. You can go to shapeitupfitness.com and request a free consult, and I'll be happy to talk to you. All right, so let's dive into today's topic. Like I said, coffee is one of my favorite things in life. (laughs) I don't remember when I started drinking coffee. I think it was, if it wasn't college, it was like senior year in high school. I'm not even sure. The only reason why I don't remember, I think, is because uh, if you've heard before, my dad had a store and we had subs and there was coffee, there was pizza and ice cream, all kinds of things. But I think I started drinking coffee at the store. But like, I have been a fan of coffee for a long time. Now, when I first started drinking coffee, it had a lot of cream and sugar in it. (laughs) So it was more sweet and creamy. And through the years, I have gone through different phases of my coffee. But back in the 90s, I actually was a barista. And if you don't know what a barista is, it's a person who makes coffee. So imagine Starbucks, the person who makes the fancy coffees. But um, I was not in a chain store and I loved it. It was downtown in Annapolis. I know it's not there anymore, unfortunately, but I lived a couple blocks away so I could walk to work. Sometimes I ride my bike and I would, I was the one who opened up the coffee store in the morning and oh my gosh, just to open the door and to smell the beans of coffee sitting there was like heaven to me. <laughs> it was so nice. Like if you're a coffee house person, this was your like ideal coffee house. Like there were books you could read, people hung out. It was, they had, um, you know, like indie type groups that would come in and play music at night. 
it was just the coolest coffee shop. And I loved working there. I loved the smell when I walked in. I loved making the cappuccinos and all the different kinds of coffees. And it was like heaven for me. It was like a dream job, right? All right. So I'm going to snap myself back to my fond memories of coffee. <laughs> but when I was in college the first time, I went to Radford University and was um, I received a Bachelor of Fine Arts. And then after that, I went in to become a professional ballet dancer. Now, between those years, which was almost a decade long, I drank a lot of coffee. I kid you not, it was two full pots of regular coffee, like the carafes, you know, the, the drip coffee. I would drink two of those and I would drink a whole pot of coffee before I even left my house in the morning. And like I said, it was loaded with cream and sugar. I did not know anything about nutrition back then. And I would head off to dance and, you know, the ballet studios and I would work throughout the day. And then I would have another pot of coffee like throughout the day. Now this is all high octane, regular coffee. Again, I did not know about nutrition and healthy eating. And I know that I was not drinking like barely any water. It was not an ideal situation for my body. And at one point I remember working, I was waiting tables in Annapolis. So as a ballet dancer, you always at least have one other job, <laughs> if not three or four. And I was waiting tables and I was getting the stabbing pain in my chest. It felt like someone was like inside of me trying to like almost ice pick their way out. And I went to a cardiologist and, and what we kind of discovered was, is I was not hydrated enough and I was just drinking way too much caffeine. After I went to the doctors and we figured that out, I actually had to cut back and do decaf. And if you're a tr quote unquote true coffee drinker, like decaf is like shameful <laughs> if you're a regular coffee drinker. So for me to go to decaf, I was like, oh, I have to drink this swill. But ironically enough, I transitioned just fine. And I went up drinking decaf coffee for a long time. Um, recently, I started adding back in regular coffee, I would say probably over the past maybe five to 10 years. But I always do half calf. So I do half caffeine, half decaf. And I find that if I do have a regular cup of coffee, it's just too much on my stomach. And also side note, I do not put, I do put cream in it sometimes. Um, I love this brand called Califia Farms. I'm not affiliated with them, but it is dairy-free and it's, there's no sugar in this version. Um, it's unsweetened and I love it. It gives me just enough cream. I don't need to add sugar, but I also can have coffee black. So I don't have a problem with either of them. And I truly just love the taste of coffee. It's not even like I don't, the, the caffeine hit, that kind of thing. It's not that. It's just, I love the taste of coffee. So what does caffeine do to your body? Caffeine stimulates your central nervous system and makes you more alert and more awake, which is all good things, right? <laughs> but it can make you restless. It can upset your stomach. Many people have ulcers from drinking too much caffeine. You can become irritable right? Especially if you're coming off of that caffeine, you can have withdrawal symptoms as again, if you're not keeping the intake of caffeine quite regularly, it can also keep you awake at night, it may interrupt your sleep patterns, disrupt your heart rhythm, increase your blood pressure, it can also cause headaches and dizziness. And we all know you can become very dependent on caffeine. Side note, do not take caffeine if you have a heart condition, because doing so will increase the rate at which your heart works and possibly lead to a heart attack. So make sure that you are going to your cardiologist, especially if you're over 40 or if you have any other heart conditions in your family. It's always important to kind of get a, a okay from the doctor, even if it's drinking coffee, because you just don't know. Anxiety is another thing. If you are a person who deals with a lot of anxiety, caffeine is not going to be your friend. This stimulant will make you even more anxious. 
And I do agree that there are a lot of people who have anxiety and need medication and that's very helpful to them. But on the other side of the coin is anxiety is also a mindset. It's how you think of the things that are happening to you. So keep that in mind that as a side note for anxiety, you know, sometimes working on your mindset can really shift things for you and make you less anxious. So here's some information about caffeine. The FDA has classified it as both a drug and a food additive. When you drink a caffeinated drink, the levels are going to peak about one hour and can last from four to six hours afterwards. And this is full caffeinated caffeine. So that could be soda, that could be a Red Bull, that could be coffee, tea. So caffeine is also a diuretic. And so what that means is it's going to dehydrate you basically. It's gonna flush out your body, you're gonna to go to the bathroom more. So to avoid dehydration, make sure you increase your hydration levels. That is 100% water, right? You wanna make sure you're hydrating with water, not with more soda or diet soda or caffeine-free soda. So for example, if you've had a 16 ounce cup of coffee, regular coffee, you need to drink 16 ounce cup of water to offset the dehydration. I often like to say err on the side of more water. So instead of being even 16 ounces, 16 ounces, you know, if you're having a 16 ounce cup of coffee, you wanna have like 20 ounces of water just to offset it. Um, I personally, when I drink my coffee, I am taking a couple sips of coffee and I'm drinking water at the same time. You can become acclimated to caffeine, right? Different levels. So drinking it on a regular basis, you will lose its effectiveness. So if I'm drinking a pot of coffee every day, I've now built up a tolerance. And in order to get the same effect, you will need to increase the amount of caffeine. So instead of drinking 16 ounces and getting the alertness, you will now need to have like 24 ounces, right? Because it's kind of addictive. Studies suggest moderate amounts is totally fine and it's not detrimental and actually will increase alertness. Doctors recommend between 100 to 200 milligrams of caffeine per day and this equates to about 5 to 10 ounces of coffee. Anything over 600 milligrams, which is equivalent to 4 to 7 cups of coffee, is too much. And the Mayo Clinic suggests about 400 milligrams per day is relatively safe. So where else can we find caffeine? We tend to think of caffeine as coffee, but it can also be found in chocolate, sodas, which I mentioned, ice cream, such as coffee ice cream, caffeine tabs, Red Bull. So make sure you are checking out those nutritional labels and seeing if something has caffeine in it that you might not think it does. So here's a suggestion. I told you about my story about the two pots of coffee that I would drink early, in my early 20s, which again, I find <laughs> fascinating that I didn't keel over from a heart attack drinking that. Um, because at the time too, I was, my, I have allergies and I was taking Sudafed. And I probably was taking Sudafed a couple times a day. And I remember going to the college doctor and they were like, you're basically taking speed. And I was like, huh, <laughs> that explains why I'm able to work a job, go to school, you know, uh, do all these dance rehearsals and all this stuff and get my homework done. So I am not advocating that by any stretch of the imagination. So, but there was a while when I stopped drinking coffee because I had such massive chest pains and I did switch to decaf and you might want to consider switching and just try it out. Like I said, I know, I understand if you're a true coffee drinker, decaf is like a bad word in the coffee genre, though maybe not so much nowadays. But, uh, you know, like I said, I divide it up into, it, they call it a half-calf and it's half decaf and half regular. I typically will have 20 ounces of coffee a day. And like I said, that's a half cap. I drink 10 ounces in the morning and then 10 kind of mid early or afternoon. And the reason why is because if I drink coffee like after four, I will be awake, even if it's a half cap. There will be times when I go out to eat and instead of getting dessert, I will get a decaf. It seems to be fine. Like I can go to sleep and everything like that. But 
Um, so I basically try to stay away from caffeine any time after four because after four, I'm going to be awake, which is not good when you have to wake up early in the morning <laughs> the next day. So if you decide to go decaf, mm, you, you want to follow some tips, okay? So if you're going to take the caffeine out, which I highly recommend, at least some of it, depending on how much you're drinking, you want to kind of spread that out over a couple months because you are going to go through withdrawal. So if you take out caffeine and go decaf for a couple months, when you add it back in, you're going to get that little jolt of alertness you used to get from regular coffee. It's like building up a tolerance. And then when you take it away, you can build it up again. So rather than keep building and building and building until you're drinking a whole vat of coffee, like I used to do, <laughs> you're going to kind of taper down. And then if you need that extra hit of caffeine on rare occasions, you're going to be able to get that. And plus your adrenals will thank you when you go decaf. So key points to remember is don't drink too much caffeine in general, especially after four, you want to cut that off. You want to make sure that you're drinking enough water to offset the dehydration of the caffeine and just watch your total intake. You may find too that if you start cutting out the caffeine, you're gonna be able to sleep better at night. You may be able to handle situations a little bit better too because the FDA has classified it as both a drug and a food additive. So like you're definitely getting a hit off that caffeine. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening today, and I will hopefully be able to give you my awesome news next week. Have a wonderful week, and I'll talk to you then.